Let's look at the steps one by one. I do want you guys to know uh, DNA replication in these steps. It really helps to kind of break them down in that way and also appreciate the enzymes that I've bolded. These enzymes are extremely important for those steps. So first step, the two strands of DNA are separated. Basically, this is unzipping of the DNA. And the enzyme that's responsible for this unzipping is called helicase. Kind of think of that enzyme, helicase, as a zipper. And it's going to be involved in unzipping that DNA that was once um, together. Uh, these two strands bonded. Hydrogen bonds are going to hold them. The helicase comes in, zoop, unzips it. And we can actually see those strands open up. We can also see that these strands are anti-parallel, having that three prime end over here. Well, its anti-parallel complement will be the five prime end. So that unzipping occurs. Helicase allows for that. Uh, appreciate in the beginning slide, just kind of bringing that advanced topic back. Uh, it's more a bubble. Uh, that's forming during DNA replication, and replication will occur this way, going towards the right side of that screen. I'm going to actually have boxed this area because now I'm focusing on this area. I want to teach it to you in just one direction as you guys are learning these enzymes and the process of replication. So we're really just focusing on one end of that bubble, and it's going to be replicating this way towards the DNA strands that are not unzipped yet. Uh, and so it's going this way. And I'm really just focusing on that section of the bubble. Step two, primase, enzyme primase, A-S-E. That tells me it's an enzyme. Primase comes in and actually lays out small piece of RNA, very, very tiny small piece of RNA envisioned here in green. This is called a primer. And basically what primase is doing is it's laying out that primer to let other proteins know, okay, this is where you're gonna start replication. I want you to start adding nucleotide monomers here at this spot. So RNA primer comes in, marks the starting point. Uh, you will see why in a minute why I'm focusing on this strand because appreciate that I have two parent strands uh, in this dark gray. Here's one parent strand, uh, here's another parent strand and they're both gonna get uh, copied, uh, or they're both going to get complements to uh, end replication. There's a reason why I'm focusing on that top strand. You'll find out in a bit. Step three, DNA polymerase comes in, that enzyme, and it's DNA P-O-L for short. It's going to come in and lay out the new nucleotide monomers. It's a big player in DNA replication. It knows, okay, I'm going to start here. There's my RNA primer, and I am going to go ahead and synthesize and elongate this new DNA strand. And it's going so in this direction. Uh, this is called the leading strand. The reason it's called the leading strand, and I want to point this out, <clears throat> so I taught you guys that new nucleotide monomers are added at the three prime end and only at the three prime end. So here, the parent strand is at three prime on this end. That must mean that this new strand is the five prime end over here. It's not written, but the five prime end is over here and it's complement strand. As we're going this way, this end over here is going to be three prime. So we add monomers here, then add, 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 always reading from five to three. So this isn't a problem on this strand. So it's called the leading strand because it does this quite fast. The other strand that I haven't pointed out yet does have an issue because here's a five prime. End. That's the parent strand on this side. So the new strand is going to read three prime over here, but it's going to want to go this direction along because that's where it's getting unzipped. But it can't go in this direction because the three prime end of its complement strand is over here. So it really wants to go this way. But you're going to see a little technique that kind of forces the strand to read in this direction. We're going to learn that next. So 
going back to that other strand, so I want to recap over here. This is going to be my parent strand that I'm highlighting over here. This is now my new, newly synthesized complement strand to that parent, and it's being synthesized by DNA polymerase in this direction. We can kind of see that enzyme over here. It's still doing its job, adding new monomers. Because, because over here on the parent is three prime, well over here on the new complement is five prime and it's reading five to three, five to three as it keeps going this way. That's great. That's how DNA polymerates likes to work. We call that the leading strand. Now I want to point out this second area. We actually don't have a continuous uh, formation of the new complement with DNA polymerase. We actually have something called Okasaki fragments, named so for the scientists that discovered them. And Okasaki fragments are basically going to be, it's still DNA polymerase that's synthesizing these um, nucleotides uh, into a more elongated uh, DNA strand. So it's still DNA polymerase that's doing that. But DNA polymerase wants to run from five to three. This new strand is not running from five to three. It's running from three to five, reading this way, three to five. So what Okasaki fragments are, are actually, we can see that primers have been laid out here, multiple primers, because it's wanting to work in this direction, five to three, five to three, five to three. That's different from the other one. The overall direction, the overall direction of DNA synthesis wants to go this way, towards the unzipping. It wants to go in this direction over here. <laughs> My pointer's going crazy. I'm just trying to teach you guys that the overall direction is trying to go towards the unzipping of DNA helicase. So because it's overall trying to go in that direction, it occurs in chunks or fragments called Okasaki fragments. Okay, I'll synthesize this guy next, this guy next, this guy next, and it kind of goes that way. Overall, DNA polymerase will add enough uh, monomers, uh, nucleotides, to have a complete complement being formed between the different Okasaki fragments. This is called the lagging strand for that reason in that it is not a continuous strand like the other parent. Step four, exonuclease comes in, removes all those RNA primers. Exo, exit. Uh, ACE, A-S-E, enzyme. Uh, yeah, so exonuclease, we don't want to keep RNA in our DNA. Well, the primers were made of ribonucleic acid, so exonuclease comes in, takes out those primers, um, another, so there are the primers getting removed, uh, another DNA polymerase comes in, fills in those gaps. So that way we don't have any gaps in the DNA. We have a continuous strand on both sides. To seal up those holes, once again, because DNA polymerase is coming in and filling in those gaps, but we still have some holes that kind of need to be sealed up. Kind of think of uh, this next step as the glue of uh, DNA. And the enzyme that's involved in kind of sealing up all the different Okasaki fragments together, um, all those different caps that are formed during this process, is called DNA ligase. It seals up. Everything makes everything nice and smooth so that ultimately we end up getting a fluid, continuous strand of DNA. This image right here, just check that I'm recording. I want, okay, perfect. So this image right here is showing you guys the summation of DNA replication, the process that we just talked about. Uh, dark blue is going to be the parent strand in this image. Light blue is going to be uh, the new complement strand that's forming. I do like this image because it's showing you all the steps in one because really how DNA replication is working is all those enzymes are working together at the same time. This is a very fast process that occurs in your cells. You've got millions of nucleotides that need to get synthesized, uh, need to get duplicated, uh, 
And so uh, we just have all these different players working together to be efficient about this process. Uh, I like this image as well because it's showing you guys, let me get my pointer again, it's showing you guys that the overall direction of DNA uh, synthesis is heading this way. You see that arrow pointing to from right to left in this image. And so really what that is um, telling me is that the unzipping is occurring over here, and it is. Here I can see that this DNA, the parent, is still unzipped. There's no uh, new strands that are being formed yet. Here's the unzipping. The unzipping is done by helicase doing that unzipping. So the synthesis is going to go towards that unzipping uh, as the DNA opens up. And as the DNA opens up, we have multiple proteins that are involved that I didn't talk about. This is going to kind of help keep the DNA stable. Uh, what was double-stranded now is single-stranded, so it's a little unstable. We've got some help there. Uh, here we have primase uh, laying out RNA primers. I can see that. Here I can see on the top side uh, DNA polymerase, uh, shown here with this uh, silver square, is synthesizing the new strand on the leading strand. Leading strand, light blue, is being synthesized in the 5 to 3 direction. DNA polymerase likes this and so adds new nucleotides in that way. Uh, I can see the Okasaki fragments being formed on my lagging strand. Over here is my primase laying out that primer. Here's another primer. Lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously. It happens in chunks and fragments. So primase is going to lay out different RNA primers along those fragments. Uh, here comes DNA, um, I'm sorry, here comes DNA polymerase. Uh, I'll show you guys this one where it is synthesizing in the five to three direction. Five to three direction. Here's another five to three direction uh, because that is how DNA polymerase likes to work. So this is the lagging strand since it occurs in Okasaki fragments. DNA ligase comes in uh, and it, oh, I'm not showing you DNA exonuclease uh, in this image, uh, but DNA exonuclease comes in and will remove these primers. That was a step that we had. Uh, and then DNA ligase comes in seals everything together along, especially these Okasaki fragments, to make one strand at the very end of it, one nice, long, uh, continued strand.